Hello everybody, welcome back to the great state of Montana. This is the Carbine Cowboy. Hey, it's snowing today, so kind of put the kibosh on the video that I wanted to do, but I figured I'd bring you this one anyway. Today what I wanted to speak about was the evolution of the modern day handgun. Uh, a lot of people don't understand it. Handgun evolution has came a long way. Back in the day, if a person carried a handgun, they mostly carried a single shot front lock, cap lock, or wheel lock pistol, which basically meant you fired one shot. If you wanted any more than that, you had to carry multiple handguns uh, because it took about anywhere between three to four minutes to reload one. So about 1836, Colonel Sam Colt came out with the percussion revolver. Now the 1836 Patterson was a five shot, 36 caliber revolver. Colt made many patents, perfected the percussion revolver. Uh, some of the most popular were the 1860 Colt 44 caliber, or your 1851 and either a 36 or a 44. And these were pretty much the mainstay as far as a handgun from about 1836 until 1872 uh, when they came out with what was called a cartridge firing revolver. Now back in the day, um, these handguns were loaded with loose powder and ball and then the nipple was capped, you discharged it around, cocked the hammer and repeat. Um, they were effective. They were used for the better part of 40 years and well into the metallic cartridge era. The only problem was is if you needed to reload in a hurry, the only options you had was to carry a spare cylinder, break the gun apart, put a fresh cylinder on, or you carried multiple revolvers so you didn't have to worry about reloading. Then somebody came up with an idea. They said, why can't we make these where they fire a metallic cartridge. Well, they did. The metallic cartridge was a copper case in those days with a self-contained primer, powder, and bullet. You loaded them into the gun, closed the gate, cocked the hammer, and fired. Self-contained. Really sped up the loading process. The only problem was, is when it came time to reload, brought the hammer back to half cock, opened the gate, rotated the cylinder, pushed down the ejector rod, knocked out the empty, repeat five times, load, close the gate, cock the hammer, and fire. These were the mainstay for military, law enforcement, and civilians from about 1872, well, all the way up until the advent of a double action pistol. And everybody pretty much knows what a double action pistol is. You just pull the trigger and automatically cocks the hammer and fires. But to speed up the loading process, what they did was you could swing the cylinder out. The cylinder actually tipped away from the gun. Again, you hit the ejector. It knocked the empties out. You put your live rounds in, close the cylinder, cock the hammer. Simple. But it still wasn't fast enough for some people. Um, the thing that people have to realize is, is with firearms technology, everybody wants something that's bigger, better, and faster. And, well, they did that. About the turn of the century, autoloaders started becoming real popular. And the thing about an autoloader was, is the cartridges are carried in a magazine. Now some guns will carry six, some will carry eight, some will carry, well, by today's standards, God only knows. But back then, the average auto loader was pretty much like a revolver. It carried anywhere between six to eight shots, depending. Now there were some back around the turn of the century that carried a few more, but they were kind of oddities. But we'll stick with the one that we all know, the 1911. 
when John Moses Browning invented this handgun, it was cutting edge. And it's the granddaddy of all modern day autoloaders. As I said, the cartridges are contained, they're a metallic case, and they're loaded into a magazine. The magazine is inserted into the gun, you rack the cylinder, point and shoot. Real simple, right? Not much to it. Well, the thing about it is, is all modern day, all modern day cartridges are actually derived from the black powder air. Um, a lot of people sat back and they kind of scratched their head, but the thing about it is, is firearms technology has really progressed. Um, I mean, like I said, when they went from a single shot uh, pistol to the cap and ball revolver, that was a great improvement. I mean, wow, you had five, six shots right in the palm of your hand, and you didn't have to reload after every individual shot. Then they came out with the metallic cartridge, which meant, oh, no more loose ball and powder. It's all contained. I just take a cartridge, insert it into the cylinder, cock the hammer and fire. Oh, wow, what an improvement that was. Um, but again, the military and all that wanted something that's a little faster. I mean, could you imagine being in the haze of battle or having somebody shoot at you and they're trying to rotate, knock the empties out, grab fresh rounds, stick them into the gun, close the gate, cock and fire? I mean, are they effective? Yes. Are they a little time consuming? Yes. But they kept these. And then when they came out with the double action revolver, they were a little faster. You fired your rounds, you had a latch on the side, you pushed it, the cylinder would rotate out, you tipped the gun up, hit the ejector, the empties would fall. You'd load them in by means of a moon clip or load them individually, close the cylinder back into the gun, cock the hammer and fire. Hey, it was fast. And it was a lot faster than loading them singly like you would in a single action revolver. Then they came out with the autoloader. Self-contained magazine, cartridges already preloaded, you just insert them into the gun, voila, faster. I'm going to start doing multiple series on these on the uh, advent of the handgun. And then I'm also going to do one with the progression of the rifle. So for any of you that uh, would like to watch that and be interested in it, I'm going to do a couple of those videos. But I just thought I'd bring this to you to show how far we have came from 1836 to a single action uh, cap and ball revolver to the modern day autoloader. Still the same. I mean, Will this gun do what it was designed to do today? Yeah, it'll still do what it was designed to do, even though this particular pattern is in 1862. It'll still to do today what it was designed to do back then. Would most people feel comfortable carrying one of these as a concealed carry weapon? No, not unless you're kind of an oddity like me. But... I just thought I would bring this to you. I'm curious to hear your thoughts and comments. And uh, from the great state of Montana, this is the Caribbean Cowboy saying, I'll see you next time.